It's the Charlotte Hornets coming in at 2-1. Came into MSG fearless against a Knicks team looking for three in a row. And so while the Knicks had their moments early in this game, they took an eight-point lead into the fourth quarter and it quickly evaporated. Turnovers, bad play. But it took one person's heroics to get this thing back in order. And ladies and gentlemen, we've been saying it since he got here. We got a point guard. And tonight, I'm going to put out there, we have our closer. Because Jalen Brunson, once again, with ice in his veins, led this New York Knicks team to a 134 to 131 overtime victory. You have the Charlotte Hornets coming in. No LaMelo. Haven't had my... No, Miles Bridge is long gone. No Terry Rozier. But give credit to this team because they are tough, they're resilient, and they did not quit. But nevertheless, as I said, Al, we got to start with the play of the game in Jalen Brunson. 27 points, 13 dimes a career high, and seven boards. Almost had a triple-double with ease tonight. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is this. We talked about it in the win against Orlando, how in key portions of that second half, when they needed him the most, he stepped up. And it happened again in this game. Because in the fourth quarter, Knicks had an eight-point lead in the fourth quarter. Quickly evaporating it. And when I say quickly, I mean pun intended, because quickly had two boneheaded turnovers. Cam had some boneheaded turnovers. Fournier's defense was lackluster. He had a, he had a bad turnover. Plus, uh, you had some take fouls going on there. Mm -hmm. So we had a tie game with one minute, 34 seconds left. Brunson hits a filthy pull-up, elbow three. In overtime, he accounts for seven Nick points, including another three. A filthy pass to Mitchell Robinson. And another. And another. And another bucket. Clutch bucket. This is Jalen Brunson, man. We have a point guard. We have a closer, bro. I think that's it, man. We got a point guard. That's all I need to say. Closer, point guard. Man can do it all. I mean, I think the one thing that was really standing out tonight, it felt like he had an extra pep to him tonight. I don't know why. It, it, yeah. just, it just felt that way. But the, his footwork tonight just felt like it was on a whole other level. Yeah, we know he has solid footwork. But tonight, his decision making, when he knew where he wanted to get to his spot in the paint, it just felt another second faster than usual. And watching him just go against Dennis Smith Jr., uh, Maladon, anybody who was in front of him, it didn't matter. They couldn't keep up. And you figured they would figure that out because once he picked up the ball, you knew he was going to get to his foot tricks, right? Yeah. Just like, but somehow, he's just able to. <laughs> Finish every single shot, man, whether it's fading to the side, whether it's a fadeaway jumper, whether it's just being able to get a layup and just being able to take that step in. It is all just phenomenal from Jalen Brunson, man. Not enough words to talk about how great he is. Great offseason signing. Yeah. Um, he's the goods, man. Four games in. And I'm not talking about save your talk. I'm not talking about playoffs. I'm not, I'm not even talking about any of that. I'm talking about what this team needs right now. When the rubber meets the road, when it comes to crunch time, and you're going back into the past, if years past, last year, the year before that. And yeah, RJ had his moments in the clutch last year where, where he delivered. But for the most part, you were relying on the decision making and the playmaking and the handles of RJ and Julius. And most of the time, it didn't necessarily end well for this team. Now you put it in a point guard's hands, a solid decision maker, someone who doesn't get rattled. That is Brunson, man. And, and that's why he, he, he can impact this team in the way that he does. Let, let's, let's, let's go to the bad side of things. The Knicks defense wasn't good, a, a, except for Mitch. Yeah. You know, our perimeter defense hasn't been good. We definitely need Grimes. Fournier was getting chewed up out there. Fouled out, man. Fouled out, which was a good thing because at that point in the game, that was about four minutes left in the fourth. And I'm yep. wondering, I'm like, we need Cam in here. If you're not going to go with IQ because of size, then get Cam in there because we need a defensive stop. Because as, as much as Kelly Oubre can take himself out of a game, he could also knock down a shot. And, and he forced 48 into that sixth foul. 
Yep. You know, you had Book Knight having his moments. McDaniels, you know, they have some speed. They have some athleticism out there. And it gave the Knicks fits all night. I mean, this team put up 131 points in overtime against the Knicks without LaMelo, without Terry Rozier. So that's that, you know, that that's one of the bad things is this Knicks defense has to tighten up. We need Grimes back. 48 minutes has to, you know, we got to make some decisions there because uh, because it's compromising the defense, man. This is what I've been talking about all offseason, man. Why I want Grimes in the starting rotation. We're not going to go into that talk right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. But that's what I've been talking about. But, yo, you got to – but putting Cam in there, smart decision. You talk about how Kelly Uber can help a team and he can also take himself out. Talk about Cam Reddish's defense once he did get in there. It changed, yeah. okay? Even though Forced it was a nice still, turnover. Forced a nice turnover down yes, in the clutch. Did. Yep. And he caused Ubre to get get a tech to then help the Knicks too. So it's stuff like that where you can see that just just playing sound defense, just keep staying cool, staying calm, just doing what you're supposed to do. You can force the the other team to to get themselves out of there. Got to right? go to the block nest monster, man. We we played a sound bite on on Instagram. Uh, Mitch talked about how hungry he was and he wasn't taking this opportunity for granted. I thought Mitch set an excellent tone in this game tonight with his block shots. Altering shots as well. Mm -hmm. Six blocks, including a key key block on uh, on Jaden McDaniels with nine seconds left with the Knicks clinging to a three-point lead. Six blocks for Mitch tonight. Nine points, eight rebounds, 4-4 from the field. I thought the Knicks should have went to him a little bit more uh, uh, in in some of these situations. You know, reward him a little bit. You know, reward Mitch a little bit. But nevertheless, we saw him uh, put up a little little put-back jumper in the first half. And, and I thought Mitch was solid, man. M- Mitch definitely deserves my second game ball of the night, man. He was, he was solid tonight. Solid. We have a point guard. Yes, sir. We have a point guard. Big buckets and big moments. We would have lost this game last yes. year. We have a point guard. Second, I'm worried, but not too worried about RJ because right now I feel like RJ is trying to live up to that contract. Yeah. And he may be pressing a little bit. I agree. He may be pressing a little bit. I- I'm worried about RJ. Um, Randall is balling, and I really don't really have a, 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 a issue with the way Tibbs spread the minutes tonight. Mm-hmm. Obi, Obi had his thing, but I don't know. Maybe I'm bugging. You can check the minutes on it, but... um. He left Randall on the bench for a little while and then bought Randall, and I think it was in the third. I found that good because he saved Randall down for the stretch of moments. I thought that was actually a good idea by Tiz by holding Randall back for a little bit. The minutes may not add up in the numbers column, but I think the way he distributed and the timing of the minutes made a difference. So I got to shout out Mitch because Mitch gave me more fantasy points tonight than Drew Holiday did. So all those blocks and boards, that fantastic defense. Uh, doubled it. But obviously player of the game, you can't say enough about my guy, the chosen one, Jalen Brunson. You got a point guard. Um, you know, he's just, you know, we got a point guard. He's so crafty getting to the hole. His footwork is crazy. His composure is even crazier in pressure moments, which is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And he makes everybody around him better. He elevates everybody's game and most importantly, he elevates Julius's game. And I know Julius had a lot of low IQ moments today in his plays and his decision-making. But in general today and in the previous games this season, his game has been elevated by Brunson, just finding him for easy looks. So he doesn't have to try and create them himself and then inevitably have turnovers. So we're not having the same thing that we were having last year. So love what Jalen's done for our team. We have a point guard. We're one game closer to uh, 81-1. and one. And the Nets lost to the Bucks today. So that means that we get to go and show them how it's done. Show. All right. So nevertheless, two down, two to go this week. We got the two that we felt like we needed. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Milwaukee and, and shock the world. Make some noise, man, and, and turn Friday night Knicks into a happy hour. Let's get it going, man. Number one show for the fans by the fans. CP, Alex, we out of here. See you guys Friday night. Knicks in Milwaukee. Brunson versus the Greek Freak. Blockbuster ahead.